and this lecture we're going to be talking about hormones. Hormones is often the missing link. I meet people that say, but I'm doing everything right, I'm exercising, I'm going to bed early, I'm drinking all my water, and when they tell me their symptoms, it's hormones. That was Barbara O'Neill, a health educator and nutritionist with a passion for helping people achieve optimal wellness through natural and holistic approaches. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic that affects many people, hormone imbalance in women. Hormones play a vital role in our bodies, regulating everything from our mood and energy levels to our metabolism and reproductive health. However, when these hormones become imbalanced, it can lead to a variety of health issues. In this video, we'll explore the causes of hormone imbalance, including lifestyle factors, dietary influences, and environmental toxins. We'll also discuss practical steps you can take to support your hormonal health naturally. So, whether you're experiencing symptoms of hormone imbalance or just want to learn more about maintaining a healthy hormonal system, you're in the right place. Let's listen Barbara tell us about what causes hormonal imbalance among women. So why the disruption? Number one. 1957, the first contraceptive pill was introduced to women. 1960s is called the sexual revolution. Women wanted to be able to have sex without falling pregnant. So what is the pill? The pharmaceutical companies grow acres and acres of Mexican wild yam. In a laboratory, the plant chemical called diostenin which is the plant chemical that is in the wild yam, in a laboratory this diostenin can be converted to progesterone. Now the pharmaceutical companies cannot patent progesterone and that's why they don't like sodium bicarbonate. You can't patent sodium bicarbonate. The only thing that can be patented is things they create or new things. So they add a few more atoms and come up with a synthetic estrogen. And that's what used to be in the pill. But it was causing so many problems because as you can imagine, when estrogen gets too high with its cell prolif proliferator action, it's causing a lot of problems. And so I think it was late 80s and early 90s, they recognized the problems of this rise in estrogen. And so since then, the pill also contains a synthetic progesterone. Has that fixed the problem? No, it hasn't fixed the problem because that synthetic progesterone can block the progesterone receptor site so our body can't take up the natural progesterone. Now Barbara will tell us about how the pill works. I'd like to give you an illustration of what's happening month after month, year after year when a lady is on the pill. So month after month on the pill, and by the way, how does it work? Well, those synthetic hormones go into the biochemical pathway that your body uses to make hormones, and it causes a disruption. So the body thinks, what's going on? Must be pregnant. And because it thinks it's pregnant, it doesn't release the egg. And because the egg's not released, the lady doesn't fall pregnant. But let me show you the effect of this on the body. Now Barbara will tell us a little about what happens to a woman's body on the pill. So we've got, we've got um, our red, which is oestrogen, and our green is progesterone. And as you can see by this pathway, number one hormone should be progesterone. The problem is, week after week on the pill, month after month, year after year, no release of egg, that means no corpus luteum. So where's progesterone going? Down. Month after month on the pill with synthetic oestrogen, where's oestrogen going? Oestrogen's rising. And we've got a problem today, sadly too common, it's called progesterone deficiency and oestrogen dominance. Good slave, bad master is now the master. Oestrogen with its cell proliferator action causing too much endometrium which starts to wander, there's your endometriosis. 
starts to wander all through the abdominal walls and then every month when the blood nest comes away these little pockets bleed but they have nowhere to go and it causes excruciating pain. And so the doctor will come in with a diathermy needle and burn out those little pockets. Has that fixed everything? No, it hasn't, hasn't because now there's going to be scar tissue there and because the hormone balance hasn't been fixed, more, more comes. Oestrogen, with its cell proliferator action, and the oestrogen, the synthetic oestrogens, are very similar to the oestrone oestradiol with its strong cell proliferator action, causing fibroids to grow in the uterus, causing cysts to grow on the ovaries. There's your polycystic unvarian syndrome, causing polyps to develop causing cancers to develop, causing cysts to develop in the breasts, causing breast cancer. And this high estrogen opposes thyroid function. So here's the ladies that are developing thyroid problems. Now Barbara will tell us a little about the longer term effects of the pill. And if a woman's on the pill for seven years before she has her baby, when she has her baby, if it's a man-child or woman-child, they are both born with a hormonal imbalance. These are the young men in their 30s today with penile dysfunction, with low sperm count. These are the young women with endometriosis, uh, fibroids in the uterus. These are the young women and the young men who can't fall pregnant. These are the young women who are developing breast cancer. Barbara will now tell us a little about the effects of the pill on menopause. So the lady's on the pill and then she goes through menopause. She's maybe on the pill in her teens, 20s, and then 20, 30 years later she goes through menopause. What's happening? Hot flushes. That's high estrogen. Estrogen is a cell pr proliferator and it's also a capillary dilator. So it causes the blood to rush to the skin and the husband knows because all the blankets get thrown off in the middle of the night and they get pulled back on again. One lady said to me, I'm the CEO of a company. She said, I'm in a meeting. I'm chairing a, an important meeting and I get this hot flush. She said, the perspiration drips. She said, I, she said, I, I just can't function. So she goes to the doctor and he put her on hormone replacement therapy. Has that fixed everything? What's that? More synthetic hormones. Body thinks must be pregnant so it stops flushing. It now puts its energies into breast and uterus. She's happy because she's not getting the hot flushes anymore. Six years later she notices a lump in her breast. She goes to the doctor. He does a test, finds out she's got breast cancer. He stops the hormone replacement therapy immediately. Why? He knows. He knows that it can cause breast cancer. And you say to the physician, why do you do that? Why do you put the woman on HRT? And he said she was suffering and it brought her relief. That's true. But if you ask the lady, what would you prefer, breast cancer or hot flushes? What's her answer? Bring on the hot flushes, I'll get a black lace fan. I've seen a few black lace fans. <laughs> What's another cause of hormonal imbalance? But there are some people who have obvious hormone imbalances and they've never been on the pill or HRT. There's more. What causes a chicken to be fully developed in five weeks? Growth stimulants. It's against the law to give growth stimulants to chicken and to, to cattle farmers now. So you know what they've done with the chicken industry? They've genetically modified the chickens to produce more estrogen. So if you're eating the chicken or the egg, what are you getting? You're getting those synthetic estrogens. So meat, whether it be red or white, there's no difference. Fish, what about fish? Well, when you've got 20%, maybe in some countries 50%, in some countries 80% of women on the pill or HRT, and they go to the toilet, the sewage goes out to see the fish are feeding on the sewage. And also some fish farms, they're giving growth stimulants. We're going to show you how to make lentils taste fantastic. 
But you, if, if a person wants to eat meat today, they have to be very careful what they're eating. If it's in the meat, it's in the product. Any other causes of imbalance in your hormones? I've met some people who've been vegetarians all their life, never been on the pill, yet they have a hormonal imbalance. There's more. Plastics. But today everything's plastic, isn't it? It's just plastic everywhere. And in plastic, what makes it soft is something called nonylphenol. But have you noticed the dashboards don't crack anymore? It's because they've got nonylphenol in them. And also many plastics have bisphenol A in them. And that's what makes plastic soft. So the hard plastic is a safe plastic. So BPA phrase bisphenol A. In the molecular structure of estrogen, there's a phenyl ring. And that phenyl ring locks, it unlocks the door to get the estrogen into the cell. So these plastics that have got that phenyl ring, they have an estrogenic effect on the body. They get into the estrogen receptor. And so they're called xenoestrogens. You've probably heard of it. Xenoestrogens are estrogen mimickers. They mimic estrogen in the body. And you'll find that in many plastics. The exception, again, is the hard plastic that's BPA-free. Wow. Plastics, synthetic hormones, genetically modified animals, the pill, anything else? Also chemicals, so basically they're chemical fabrics and in America you've got Trader Joe's, you've got Sprouts, you've got Whole Foods, you've got a whole lot of shops and you can quite easily get biodegradable cleaning products, laundry detergents and one of the worst Chemicals is glyphosate or Roundup. Okay, we'll add chemicals to the list of hormonal imbalances that can cause penile dysfunction, low sperm count, endometriosis, fibroids in uterus, can't get pregnant, and breast cancer. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.